Earth, a relatively small and insignificant terrestrial planet in the grand scale of the cosmos. But there is one feature that makes this world truly special. Looming beneath its protective atmosphere, simple and complex organisms thrive. For billions of years, evolution has shaped the inhabitants of Earth, eventually creating sentient life capable of grasping the complexities of the universe. Humans have often looked to the stars and wondered if we're in fact alone drifting through the vastness of space. While it appears sentient life is exceedingly rare, is it possible that simple cellular life is relatively common in the cosmos? We've customarily limited our search for life to the circumstellar habitable zone eloquently called the Goldilocks Zone. This is a range of orbits around a star that provides enough radiant energy to support liquid water on the surface of a planet, given sufficient atmospheric pressure. Several factors are considered for calculating the habitable zone, the most important being the size and type of star. Hotter stars will push the habitable zone further out, whereas cooler stars will require planets orbiting much closer to remain within this zone. For our solar system, the inner edge is around 142 million kilometers from the sun. The outer edge is around 240 million kilometers. That puts Earth barely within the inner edge of the habitable zone and Mars beyond the outer fringe. Incredibly, scientists are speculating about the existence of life on an exotic world quietly orbiting through the outer solar system. With a dense, planet-like atmosphere rich in nitrogen, weather that produces methane rain, and stable bodies of liquid on the surface, Saturn's moon Titan is the most unique and exciting world in our solar system. This orange moon is a frozen yet flammable world with hundreds of times more liquid hydrocarbons than all the known oil and natural gas reserves on Earth. So why are we considering the existence of life on Titan? After all, it's almost one and a half billion kilometers away from the sun, well outside of the habitable zone. So far, in fact, that sunlight traveling at, well, the speed of light takes over an hour to reach Titan, and temperatures on the surface are cold enough to make Antarctica seem like a tropical paradise. Nevertheless, astonishing discoveries now suggest that given the right elements, cellular life might thrive in these frigid conditions. Discovered in 1655 by the Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens, Titan was the first known moon of Saturn and only the sixth known moon in the solar system, after Earth's moon and the Galilean moons of Jupiter. Huygens named it Saturni Luna, Latin for Saturn's moon. The name Titan came from John Herschel, the son of William Herschel, who had discovered Mimas and Enceladus. He suggested names of the mythological Titans, brothers and sisters of Kronos, the Greek Saturn. In Greek mythology, the Titans were a race of powerful deities, descendants of Gaia and Uranus that ruled during the legendary Golden Age. Today, we know Titan as the sixth ellipsoidal moon from Saturn and the only moon in our solar system with a dense atmosphere. Compared to the other major moons of Saturn, Titan truly lives up to its name. Rhea is the closest in size, but it's still three times smaller. Evidence suggests that during the formation of Saturn, any large moons were either absorbed by dramatic collisions or simply ejected from their orbits while passing too closely to the mighty Titan. Both Rhea and Iapetus are believed to be the remnants from spectacular collisions early in Titan's history. 
Titan's diameter of 5,150 kilometers is about half the diameter of Earth and nearly as large as Mars, making it the second largest moon in the solar system after Jupiter's Ganymede. While Titan appears larger, if we remove the dense atmosphere, it's clear Ganymede wins the size contest. Even Mercury has a diameter smaller than Titan, however Mercury is denser than both Titan and Ganymede combined. Compared to our own moon, Titan is 50% larger and 80% more massive. Titan's density is relatively low for its volume, so it has about 86% less gravity than Earth, which means you could jump almost 8 times higher than you could on Earth. Standing on the surface of Titan, you would experience an average temperature of negative 179 degrees Celsius. Titan's distance from the Sun yields this forbidding and persistently frigid environment. A mere 1% of the Sun's illumination reaches Titan. This means midday would appear extremely dim, yet it would be 300 times brighter than the illumination observed under a full moon on Earth. Orbiting 1.2 million kilometers from Saturn, Titan takes only 16 days to complete one orbit. If you could see through the hazy atmosphere while standing on the surface, Saturn would appear 11.4 times larger in the sky compared to our own moon as seen from the surface of Earth. Titan's orbital eccentricity is rather high, which means its orbit is not very circular and thus passes closer to Saturn on one side of its orbit. Like our own moon, Titan is tidally locked in synchronous rotation above Saturn's equator. This means it always shows the same face towards Saturn and its day is equal to its orbital period. Composed of half-water ice and half-rocky material, Titan has a bulk density of 1.88 grams per centimeter cube. Its hydrous silicate core is about 3,400 kilometers in diameter. Surrounding the core are several layers of different crystalline forms of ice. A liquid subsurface ocean composed of water and ammonia is found under the crust. This is possible due to heat and pressure within Titan's interior, and to some extent tidal forces from Saturn, which combined produces enough heat to sustain liquid water below its surface. Above the subsurface ocean is a thin water ice crust. On Earth, the crust sits on top of the upper mantle, which is made up of hot, high-pressure rock that slowly flows over long periods of time, causing land masses to shift as they have since the time of Pangaea. On Titan, however, surface features shifted by 30 kilometers over a period of only two years. This indicates the crust of Titan is not attached to the interior. Instead, it actually floats atop a global ocean. Like Europa and Enceladus, scientists believe the conditions for life could exist within the subsurface ocean layer. Here on Earth, we find life thriving around hydrothermal vents in the deepest parts of the ocean where no sunlight penetrates. So it's not hard to imagine that life could be thriving within Titan's subsurface ocean. But that's only one potential for life on this planet-like moon. Titan's thick orange atmosphere is the most distinguishable feature we can see from space. Its orange color is likely produced by heteropolymer molecules called tholines. These are tar-like organic precipitates that are thought to form in reactions resulting from the sun's photolysis of methane in Titan's nitrogen-rich atmosphere. While tholines are not found on modern-day Earth, they are rather abundant on icy moons in the outer solar system. Evidence suggests that tholines may facilitate the formation of prebiotic chemistry. This could have a significant implication of the origins of life. 
Composed of 98.4% nitrogen, Titan has the only nitrogen-rich atmosphere in the solar system aside from Earth. The remaining 1.6% is composed of mostly methane and a little hydrogen. With no oxygen in the atmosphere, you wouldn't be able to breathe on Titan though. There are trace amounts of other hydrocarbons like ethane, acetylene, propane, and other gases such as argon, helium, and even hydrogen cyanide. Titan's atmosphere is two times thicker than Earth's atmosphere and about 7.3 times more massive on a per surface area basis. Standing on the surface, you'd feel about 50% more pressure than you would on Earth. That's equivalent to the pressure you'd feel when diving 15 feet underwater on Earth. As a result, you would not require a pressure suit to survive on Titan, but you would need oxygen to breathe, and without an insulated suit, you would freeze where you stood in seconds. Given Titan's thick atmosphere and low gravity, you could fly like a bird with a set of wings strapped to your arms. The physical exertion required might be similar to swimming through water on Earth. Surely this knowledge would greatly have been appreciated for those who attempted such comical feats a century ago on Earth. Titan's low gravity struggles to retain its atmosphere that wraps rather loosely around the moon and rotates much faster than its surface. The mesosphere extends 600 kilometers above the surface, that's about two times higher than the International Space Station orbits Earth, and about 480 kilometers higher than Earth's mesosphere. Like all the moons in our solar system, Titan lacks a magnetosphere required for shielding its atmosphere from the solar wind. However, Titan spends 95% of its time within Saturn's magnetosphere. This graphic illustrates Titan just outside of Saturn's protective magnetosphere for a short period of time during its 16-day orbit around the gas giant. Both sunlight and Saturn's magnetosphere are central to the formation of Titan's incredibly thick haze. 1,000 kilometers above Titan's surface, nitrogen and methane molecules are broken down as photons and highly energized particles collide with the atmosphere. In a chain of chemical reactions triggered from positive ions and electrons, a multitude of hydrocarbons are formed. As these compounds grow larger, they begin to sink deeper within Titan's atmosphere due to their increasing weight. Within the lower atmosphere, these large aggregates of atoms and molecules benefit from favorable conditions, ultimately producing carbon-based aerosols which directly affects Titan's climate. Titan's climate is uniquely regulated by the presence of conflicting environmental effects. Atmospheric methane creates a greenhouse effect on the surface, without which Titan would be far colder. Conversely, carbon-based aerosols that produce the thick atmospheric haze contributes to an anti-greenhouse effect. This in turn reflects 90% of sunlight back into space, canceling a portion of the greenhouse effect and making its surface significantly colder than its upper atmosphere. Seasons ebb and flow on Titan, each lasting about seven and a half Earth years. When the Cassini spacecraft arrived at Saturn in 2005, Titan's North Pole was in the middle of winter. By the end of its mission, Cassini witnessed the seasons change as the North Pole emerged into the light of spring and the South Pole transitioned into fall. During this seasonal change, scientists discovered a monstrous ice cloud over the South Pole. Interestingly, this cloud formed in the stratosphere, a stable region high above the troposphere where the active weather layer is found. Global winds in Titan's stratosphere transport gases from the pole in the warm hemisphere to the pole in the cold hemisphere. At the cold pole, the warm air sinks in a process known as subsidence. The sinking gases, a mixture of smog-like hydrocarbons and nitrogen-bearing chemicals called nitriles, encounter colder and colder temperatures on the way down. 
Different gases will condense at different temperatures, resulting in a layering of clouds over a range of altitudes. At an altitude of 200 kilometers, a noxious ice cloud was also observed above the South Pole. Experiments determined that the exotic ice cloud is a combination of hydrogen cyanide and the large ring-shaped chemical benzene. The two chemicals appear to have condensed at the same time to form ice particles rather than one being layered on top of the other. Drifting below these exotic cloud formations are methane rain clouds that form in a remarkably similar way as clouds do on Earth. As liquid methane evaporates from the surface, clouds are formed when it reaches an altitude where the combination of temperature and air pressure is right for condensation. Typically, only 1% of Titan is covered by clouds, though outbursts of rapid cloud expansion by 8% has occurred. As the clouds accumulate, thick droplets of liquid methane rain down, giving rise to surface features strikingly similar to Earth. Adorned with mountains, valleys, dunes, rivers, seas, and lakes, Titan's surface is covered with Earth-like features, making it an exciting study among the scientific community. Yet, there are surprisingly bizarre characteristics on its surface. Instead of sand or dirt, Titan's surface is covered by non-silicate granules. The granules are essentially plastics formed in the atmosphere as hydrocarbons produce longer chain molecules that fall to the surface. These include propylene, which is found in common household plastics we use every day. A rather peculiar phenomenon indicates these granules are electrically charged. Sand dunes on Earth are shaped in the direction the wind blows, but Titan's dunes are curiously formed in the opposite direction of the prevailing winds. When strong winds disturb the non-silicate granules on the surface, an electrostatic charge is produced as the grains collide with each other. This charge provides enough cohesion that the grains can stick together for months at a time, particularly because of Titan's low gravity. Scientists compare this to the same effect you might observe with packing peanuts and shipping boxes. If you've ever stuck your arm in a pile of packing peanuts, you probably noticed that some of them stuck to your arm due to a frictional charge. The same effect can be observed if you rub a balloon against your hair. The electrostatic charge lifts your hair up as you pull the balloon away. Unlike many of the moons in our solar system, Titan's surface is relatively smooth with few impact craters. There's a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, Titan's thick atmosphere destroys most objects colliding with it before they can ever reach the surface. And second, it's believed geological processes may have reshaped Titan's surface. Although Titan has been around since the formation of the solar system four and a half billion years ago, its surface is much younger because Titan is so cold, evidence suggests that cryovolcanoes are the force reshaping Titan's surface. Unlike volcanoes on Earth that erupt hot magma, these things eject volatile such as water, ammonia, or methane. In a sense, these are ice volcanoes, and most likely the source of methane found in Titan's atmosphere. An area of the surface known as the Xanadu region is a large, reflective equatorial area about the size of Australia. It's filled with hills and cut by valleys and chasms. After hitching a ride on the Cassini spacecraft, the Huygens space probe landed on the surface of Titan near the Xanadu region on January 14, 2005. Taking three hours to descend through Titan's thick atmosphere, Huygens became the first probe to land in the outer solar system, and the only probe to land on a moon other than our own. It sent back data and images for about 90 minutes after touchdown and remains the most distant landing of any human-made craft. 
Although no lakes or oceans were seen from Huygens' images, it appears to have landed in a dried up lake bed. The rounded stones seen in front of Huygens' camera are strikingly similar to river stones on Earth that are shaped by flowing water. Scientists believe the landing site is covered by liquid methane during seasonal rains, but as the seasons change, sunlight evaporates the liquid, leading to the dry lake bed seen in these images. Titan also features mountains on its surface. Radar altimetry suggests height variation is low, typically no more than 150 meters. Occasional elevation changes of 500 meters have been discovered, and Titan has mountains that sometimes reach several hundred meters to more than one kilometer in height. While stunningly beautiful, mountains are relatively common, but the incredible discovery of flowing liquid on the surface shatters any commonality with other worlds besides Earth. H2O, a molecular compound found in 117 million lakes dotting the surface of every continent on Earth. Yet this accounts for less than 1% of Earth's water. A whopping 97% is found in a vast global ocean covering 71% of our planet. Our proximity to the sun facilitates these stable bodies of liquid water. Oceans and lakes filled with water are so familiar to us that Titan challenges our wildest imagination as the only other home in our solar system to hold stable bodies of liquid on its surface. But unlike Earth, Titan's lakes and seas are not filled with water. When the Cassini spacecraft began studying the Saturnian system in 2004, it observed a dark feature near Titan's south pole called Ontario Lacus. This was later confirmed to be a hydrocarbon lake filled with liquid methane, ethane, and propane, the main components found in natural gas. Ontario Lacus is the largest lake found in Titan's southern hemisphere. Lacus is of course Latin for lake. Radar measurements indicate the average depth of Ontario Lacus is extremely shallow, ranging from 40 centimeters to 3 meters and a maximum depth of 7 meters, or about 23 feet. With methane being an extremely flammable compound in the presence of oxygen, it's difficult to imagine this stuff lapping against a lakeshore as water does on Earth. It's certainly a good thing Titan's atmosphere is lacking oxygen. When Titan's North Pole emerged from 15 years of winter darkness, Cassini discovered a lake called Jingpo Lacus. This stunning photo of the infrared's peculiar reflection was captured by Cassini as sunlight was reflected off the surface of the lake. Dozens of smaller lakes have been discovered in Titan's North Pole region, some of them up to 50 kilometers across. It seems the lack of sunlight in Titan's polar region prevents this rather high concentration of lakes from evaporating. But lakes aren't the only surprise found on Titan's surface. It also has three seas of liquid methane. Located near the North Pole, Ligeia Mare is the second largest sea on Titan. It's larger than Lake Superior on Earth with a surface area 126,000 square kilometers and contains enough liquid methane to fill Lake Michigan three times over. Ligeia Mari is much deeper than Ontario Lacus, averaging 20 to 40 meters with some parts exceeding 200 meters in depth. Several hydrocarbon rivers flow into Ligeia Mari, the longest one stretching 400 kilometers across the surface. Radar observations showed the surface of Titan's second largest sea was smooth as glass, with waves no taller than one millimeter. This was a confounding discovery. Given Titan's atmospheric density, waves can be generated at lower wind speeds than on Earth, and should be seven times higher courtesy of Titan's lower gravity. Either the liquid is so viscous that waves struggle to form, or more likely, surface winds were minimal during observations. 
A year on Titan is equal to 30 years on Earth, so its seasons are rather long. It's possible Lygea Mari is seasonably calm during the long dark winter, while the sun's energy may drive stronger winds during Titan's long summer, and thus produce higher waves. Another rather peculiar phenomenon was observed in Lygea Mari. Informally known as Magic Island, observations show the evolution of a transient feature within the lake. Cassini witnessed this island disappear and reappear over time, which can't be explained by tides, sea level, or seafloor changes. We're not sure, but scientists speculate that nitrogen bubbles formed in Titan's oceans sit on the surface for a period of time, creating a temporary island that eventually dissipates. Titan's largest sea is also found in the North Polar region. The Kraken Mare is 400,000 square kilometers. That's almost the same size as Texas. Named after the legendary sea monster, Kraken Mare is split in two parts, with a strait connecting each side that's roughly the same size as the Strait of Gibraltar. Because of Titan's orbital eccentricity, it experiences more tidal forces from Saturn as it passes closest to the planet. This may cause tides of one meter, generating strong currents and whirlpools in the strait, affectionately nicknamed the Throat of Kraken. We've only discussed a few of the major lakes and seas on Titan. There's at least 36 lakes we know of and three seas. Together, they contain 300 times the volume of oil reserves on Earth. While Titan's lakes and seas are incredibly intriguing, the most exciting part is the possibility of life thriving within them. Whether or not life is present on Titan is one of the most intriguing questions currently being researched by scientists. Titan's thick atmosphere is a soup of complex organic compounds ideal for prebiotic chemistry or potentially exotic life. Critics assert that Titan is far too cold for liquid water to exist on its surface and thus making it unlikely that life could develop. We know that water is the solvent of all life on Earth. But what if we replaced water with a liquid hydrocarbon? Although water is a stronger solvent, it's more chemically reactive and can break down large organic molecules through hydrolysis. If life on Titan used liquid methane as a solvent, then it would not face the risk of its biomolecules being destroyed through hydrolysis. Life forms living in Titan's rivers, lakes, or seas of liquid hydrocarbons would intake hydrogen in place of oxygen, react it with acetylene instead of glucose, and produce methane instead of carbon dioxide. By comparison, some methanogens on Earth obtain energy by reacting hydrogen with carbon dioxide, producing methane and water. If methanogenic life existed in sufficient numbers, then a measurable effect of the hydrogen in Titan's atmosphere should be observed. Curiously, scientists have found levels of hydrogen and acetylene near the surface to be much lower than expected. The physics of diffusion causes the higher concentration of hydrogen in Titan's upper atmosphere to flow downward at a rate of 1,025 molecules per second. But near the surface, the downward flowing hydrogen apparently disappears. Could this be the result of methanogenic life consuming hydrogen on Titan's surface? While this discovery suggests a real potential for life on Titan, some scientists caution that other explanations like human error or meteorological processes are more likely. It's also possible that a mineral catalyst is present that enables hydrogen and acetylene to react chemically. But we don't know of any such catalyst to date, and the discovery of one might be more surprising than if we actually did find life on Titan. 
Assuming life did arise on Titan, how could it form a stable cell without liquid water? On Earth, cells rely on a phospholipid bilayer, the protective structure that separates the inside of the cell from the outside world. These fatty molecules require water to exist. Scientists began looking for compounds that could allow cellular life to thrive in Titan's methane lakes and seas. They found the organic compound acrylonitrile could form a hollow microscopic sphere that they dubbed an azotozone. This protective sheet would provide the separation necessary for a stable cell membrane. As it turns out, astronomers have discovered a lot of this stuff in Titan's atmosphere while observing it from the ALMA Observatory in Chile. Carried to the surface by methane rain, NASA Goddard's team estimate that Titan's C. Ligea Mari could have accumulated enough acrylonitrile to form about 10 million azotozomes in every milliliter or quarter teaspoon of liquid. That's compared to roughly a million bacteria per milliliter of coastal ocean water on Earth. Further studies of Titan's atmospheric gases found something miraculous. When energy was applied to a combination of the same gases found on Titan, some of the compounds produced included the five nucleotide bases that constitute the building blocks of DNA and RNA, as well as amino acids, the building blocks of protein. Life as we know it could not exist without these vital elements, and it seems likely that even exotic life forms would require something similar. All the evidence suggests an exciting potential for life to arise and thrive in Titan's adverse environment. But we just can't say for certain without sending another probe to study the surface of Titan's methane lakes and seas, which is precisely what NASA is planning. The most exciting idea involves a submersible autonomous vehicle. Launching by the year 2038, this submarine would splash down in Titan's largest sea, the Kraken Mare, becoming the first submarine to explore the depths of an extraterrestrial sea. The addition of a submarine to NASA's fleet would expand their capabilities to include situ nautical operations. A Titan sub could prove incredibly useful in the search for life within Titan's seas but it might also offer clues to how life on Earth formed. With an array of sophisticated autonomous instruments on board, the submarine would observe and analyze samples from the bottom of Kraken Mare. It's almost eerie to think of what we could find while diving the depths of a liquid methane sea. Several other mission ideas have been proposed in the wake of Cassini's incredible discoveries that has left us with an endless supply of intriguing questions. These include a balloon circumnavigating Titan's atmosphere from an altitude of 10 kilometers, a robotic aircraft that would photograph Titan's surface as it cruised through the atmosphere, and a boat that has small propellers allowing it to explore the surface and shorelines of Titan's seas, lakes, and rivers. These future endeavors are beyond exciting, but we'll have to remain patient for the time being since these are just preliminary proposals. We face crucial engineering challenges ahead if we ever hope to boldly attempt a mission to study an extraterrestrial sea with a submersible autonomous vehicle. For now, the question remains, will we find life upon our return to this orange moon? No matter what the future holds, Titan will always remain one of the most extraordinary worlds in our quiet corner of the galaxy. Thank you for watching to the end. Be sure and subscribe to my channel for more documentaries in the future, and let me know what you thought in the comments below. Thank you also to my patrons, whose support helps to cover some of the expenses I invest in producing these videos. Visit my Patreon page if you'd like to help out too.
Until next time, my friends, I'm Tex. Happy orbiting. <laughs>